This week in PlayStation, we're talking about Blessings Thoughts of the Stellar Blade demo, our Open Roads review, and why we can't stop playing Helldivers 2. We'll have all this and more because this is PSI Love You XOXO. <laughs> Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to PSI Love You XOXO, your weekly PlayStation conversation. That's Blessing. That's Joey. I'm Greg. And if you love what we do here, use that kind of funny membership to support our 11-person independent San Francisco-based operation. With the kind of funny membership, you can get each and every episode of PSI Love You XOXO ad free you could watch live as we record it like dj mayor is mr hawks 182 is and unique technique are of course you could also get those benefits for the afternoon podcast get all the other shows ad free and get my daily multimedia experience greg way you can get ps i love you xoxo with ads and without the exclusive content on youtube and podcast services around the globe each and every week thank you to our patreon producers carl jacobs kieran hova sapien delaney Twining. Today we're brought to you by Shady Rays, but let's start with a PSN message from you. Joey. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Thanks for coming through. This is fun. I'm like very rarely on this show. Yeah, you're not you're you're not a you're not a usual PS I love you no. person. And I think the last time I was on here, neither of you were here because I think we were talking about destiny. You guys makes like, sense. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. We're like peace. Give it to me, give it to Andy, we give like it to peace. Fran. Is that what you said? I said we were like peace. Oh, we were like yeah. comma, we were, we were peace, like peace deuces. Yeah. We're out. Dude, yeah, 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 I go with deuces. Yeah, I like yeah. deuces. But now mm -hmm. Ghostbusters and Destiny. I spent the 20 oh. or $30 for it all. Don't worry, Joey. I'm ready to go. Are you ever going to use them? You tell me when. Ooh. You tell me what we're doing. I, I Did you see play this. Lightfall? Did you play? Have you, when was the last time you played Destiny? I don't know. Uh, I have played it good. since I platinumed it. So like, I mean, like I have been yeah. back. I don't know what I did. I think me and Barrett tried unsuccessfully once we jumped in and we tried to do this <laughs> stuff and then it turned out you had to pay for it. And we're like, oh, Isn't is it crazy thing. that you can know so little about a game that you platinumed? I put oh, in yeah. probably 80 hours oh, in yeah. Destiny 2, and like I don't know anything about Destiny anymore. Yeah, 100%. No, I've no idea. I've played like a fair amount of Destiny, and I've never once looked. Like, I don't even know what the platinum would be for Destiny. It ain't bad. It ain't bad. It was fun. I enjoyed myself. Huh. Yeah. yeah. I think I want to say I got it in the first month, so it wasn't like, you know, outrageous. It was pretty much like play through the campaign, but with the three different um, classes. Oh, classes. classes. Yeah. Oh, Is that yeah. all? Yeah. I'm never going to play I mean, it was, I feel like that was the big task, and like all the other trophies you were pretty much platinuming as you were playing and stuff. Fair enough. <laughs> Our PSN message, ladies and gentlemen, comes from Dylan from Louisville. If you want to be like Dylan from Louisville, head on over to kindoffunny.com slash P-S-I-L-Y to give us your PlayStation thought starter. Dylan says, in the age of runaway costs, mass layoffs, microtransaction mayhem, and publishers trying to capture as much revenue as possible without breaking the sacred $70 price point, should PlayStation be following the Nintendo pricing model? Mm. Hear me out. On the PlayStation side, I consistently wait for steep discounts when buying games. I have a large enough backlog and can push through the initial FOMO that I basically always pay 50 to 75% off for all games. On the Nintendo side, however, I know games will never be discounted more than 10%. So I am much more likely to just buy the game up front. Maybe the additional unit sales is worth it to Sony, and you could argue that I would buy less games overall, but I know in my anecdotal evidence, uh, they are missing out on at least some revenue from me. I'm interested to hear the crew's thoughts. So Dylan is arguing that PlayStation games should be more expensive. I've never <laughs> heard this. What's wrong people, with you? People say we're disconnected from how much $70 mean. Dylan's like, listen... I'm using the system to my advantage, and I would like that option removed. <laughs> That's crazy talk. I think the uh, reality here is more so that with PlayStation and Xbox and like anybody that's not Nintendo at this point, right? On your platform, there is more competition for software. And so sure. like if PlayStation is not discounting their games, then they're just going to see less of those software sales overall because if somebody's not going to play god of war or spider-man they will probably play an assassin's creed or some other big single player game right whereas we talk about it for nintendo if you're if you have a nintendo platform you're buying the nintendo games and so if nintendo's not discounting mario zelda whatever it is you're still probably going to get it for full price because it's either that or nothing 
I mean, maybe an Nintendo game or something else. But you're buy, you're buying a Switch to play Nintendo games. <clears throat> yeah, hundred percent. I think they know they have the market literally cornered. There's nowhere else to play these games I mean, legally, allegedly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Joey, are we missing something? Um, I don't think so. It is, Haven't you I, always said you wanted to pay more for your games, though? I always. Like, I wait until the Steam sales are over in order to buy the games. That's <laughs> you what wish I this do. during the sale. Exactly. Sale ends go bye bye bye. I need them to be more expensive. Yeah. Um. I yeah. I think they're the crossover between Xbox people who have Xbox and PlayStation and Steam. Like, two out of those three is probably way higher. So, like, if it's not going to be discounted on PlayStation, then someone's going to buy it discounted on Xbox or discounted on Steam. Yeah. Compared to Nintendo. Yeah, it's an interesting... I, I appreciate you thinking outside the box, Dylan from Louisville. I understand the layoffs. We're all worried about that and the you know longevity of our industry. I don't think this is the move. I don't think never discounting your games is the move because I do think, like Blessing said, it would, in fact, hurt PlayStation yeah. and a lot of these things. If it was, you could never get an onboarding point that was cheaper because there is so much competition. And I would say... And I guess this is a weak part of my argument, honestly. But I would say competition for sure and then the fact that playstation puts out more exclusives i say wincing where it's like no, it hasn't been good lately but i feel like in general you see more output from playstation studios than you do nintendo no first way. party am i wrong on that you think i think you're wrong i think you're discounting like the breadth of like nintendo stuff because i think you're thinking of big nintendo games yeah i'm thinking of peach just came out sure yeah and then mario but then, like, yeah, i think you have like the mario parties of the world you have like the pikmins you have like um, I think you have like a larger range of just like, and I couldn't even tell you like a lot of the smaller Nintendo stuff right now, but I know they're there. They're okay. out there. That's like, why I wince because I'm really, like, I'm not up on Nintendo's a bunch library of different as much. Kirby games. It's, a, it's really a moot point because <laughs> I do think it comes Nintendo down. Exclusive. Yeah, Fire Emblems, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it comes down to what you're talking about in terms of uh, people are buying Nintendo for Nintendo and of course the fact that there aren't, isn't as much competition on the platform for a game like you're saying of God of War yeah. versus Assassin's Creed I or think, something. I think like, when it comes to pricing across PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo, whoever, I think it all comes down to the balance of what are we making more money doing, right? Like yeah. what is going to maximize our our income? And I think for PlayStation, it is cutting those prices down uh, after a few months or after a year or whatever it is. Or maybe even it is like putting games on PS Plus or PS Plus Extra or PS Plus Pre Extra Extra. Um, extra Extra. I think that stuff balances out where it is, hey, we're getting you into our platform. Or, you know, for PlayStation, I think it very much is, hey, we are going to sell way more units by selling these games at $40 at some point or $30 or whatever it is, as opposed to keeping it to full price and people not feeling like they want to put down the money for a new <laughs> so zip up or zip down. Just let it go, all right? Because if you, you, you go, zipped it down and like you zipped it back. Well, I know I zipped it, it up. Notice that I, I zipped the wire inside oh, of it, looked at the oh, camera inside, and then unzipped <laughs> it and re-zipped it. All right, don't worry about what I'm zipping over. After here. the fourth zipper, zipper, zipper sound, my brain's like, there's something off. <laughs> <laughs> I had to so I haven't been paying attention, but something's not yeah, right. Something's, something's not right. The audio cues Greg are wrong. Finally yeah. unzips his yeah, yeah. I'm a lizard after yeah. all. But yeah, like you look at the numbers too for Nintendo, and it is like the what Animal Crossing is the, the New Horizons sold what 40 million or something like that. Something it's outrageous, insane yeah. amounts, and that is without as many discounts as you see for like other third party publishers. And I think that all speaks to the fact that this is a strategy that works for Nintendo. I think once Nintendo starts to see those sales slow down in a way that discounting them makes sense for their business they'll do it but right now and i don't, I, don't, I think i guess forever <laughs> that's not going to make sense for nintendo because people are going to buy those games anyway yep well said blessing let's move on to topic of the show dots 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 i don't know any of these things <laughs> i appreciate you don't watch either uh, we have a whole bunch of games to talk about it's a big old what you've been playing we got mm -hmm. reviews in here we got previews in here of other things people need to know about but what i need to know about ladies and gentlemen is Joey Noel? Mm -hmm. How is the Helldivers Two journey going? It's good. It's I. It's, it's not as far as I want it to be. Okay, where are I, we at? So I'm at level like 22 now. Okay, and I want to be higher. Yeah, but there's just not enough time for all of the things, which is the eternal problem. Sure, especially with this game because I feel like with a lot of other games that I play frequently. I can jump in by myself. And this is not one where I figured out a good rhythm of playing by myself. Mm, Jumping in mm. with other people, I don't feel like is also super great. I feel like half the time I jump into like one of the parties that aren't full, like on the map or whatever like that, it's, <clears throat> I get kicked out immediately after and I have to like go hunt for another one, which is like not particularly fun. I just want to keep playing. Put your friend code out there. <sighs> yes, I could. 
but then I don't. Here's the other problem: is I'm I listening. don't always want to play when I have to talk to people. I usually am like zoned out and like watching something in the background or whatever. And I feel like if I put my friend code out, then that. Here's what I'll tell you: somebody who's, who's put his friend code out and broke his game, but then yeah. got it fixed. Good job, Arrowhead. Is that most people join and they don't expect me to talk, and most people oh. join and don't talk. It'll be uh, yeah. there's definitely other times people pop in and hey Greg and if you don't respond they're not like I said hey Greg <laughs> <laughs> put on your headphone you idiot oh, yeah. I'm sorry I'm coming you can jump in there and you can just have it there is an unspoken not rule but respect among I think the kind of funny hell diver fans oh, okay. that like they would understand and respect your time and also they yeah. know you well enough. That's that if true. they're jumping in there, they know what's up and that you're I smart. will shout out SD Infected who jumps in. Dude, SD Infected have... is still the homie. <clears throat> and he's like max level, so he's not yep. getting like any XP from jumping in and playing medium level challenges with me ever. But I mean, that's one of the things I think that stands out so impressively about this game is that no matter what you're doing with it, I feel like you're getting in there and having fun. It doesn't yeah. matter if you're in there and you're trying to grind the hardest difficulty you're getting in there to help people right uh i love the community the way they've rallied around all of this like i see so many tweets and posts on the subreddit about like no i'm here to like drop into really low level missions drop the fun things to show to like sherpa yeah early level players into like, why this, this game is fun go. and why yeah. you should keep playing um and i think that that's cool because that doesn't seem to be anything that's been like trickle down from the devs it does seem like the community is really rallied oh 100 percent. i think that's one of the what makes it so special yeah um i the other thing i haven't figured out about hell divers and i think it's probably i just need to be more consistent about playing it is i the automatons i don't have a good strategy for them because i never play them because they feel too hard compared yeah. to the bugs yeah, yeah um so i feel like that kind of limits what i play in hell divers but you gotta you gotta get over it. you gotta get out there you gotta mix it up you gotta yeah, get but in the, there then i just die all shoot the time because the they shoot back. You know I, mean? yeah, I figured out a strat. Maybe I maybe I just need to commit. Also, there's too many games that all of my other friends are playing, so it's hard to rally everyone. Yeah. But there is a wider net of people that are playing. And that's the biggest thing about it. The the people who are playing are there. And that's why I got, <laughs> I'm getting ready for another Frank Code share. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, because I I've been uh on my walkabout as well, where it's like Helldivers dropped, reviewed it, played the wheels off it. Uh, obviously, did a bunch of streams here, and then it was okay. Well, now I got to go review WWE. Now yeah. I got to go to this. Now I got to go to that, blah blah blah. And now, uh, last night, I got Poe visiting. Poe brought his ten-year-old son, Jack. Jack loves video games. Jack is over streaming with the guys right now <laughs> while they play the zoo game or whatever, right? <laughs> and we made him work yesterday, play Fortnite with us, and yeah. tomorrow he's hopefully playing Helldivers with us. Because last night I went down there, and it was let's go. You've been playing Fortnite. You've been playing WWE. You play all these mobile games. Let's play Helldivers. Let's talk about yeah. democracy. Let's talk about freedom. <laughs> and it was, I don't think about it often of like, to me, because Jack will text me and talk to me about video games. I'm like, all right, cool. He's one of us. But I, I take for granted that in a world for a 10 year old of video games, it's just so wide. Mm -hmm. And so when it is that he knows Fortnite inside and out better than you and I do, when oh, we're yeah. playing, we're asking him things yesterday. Yesterday we were playing and he's he he's doing the tutorial and I was like all right you know yeah use your grenade you know hit right on the D pad and he kept like cycling past it and doing I'm like right on the D pad and finally his dad goes Jack do you know what a D pad is <laughs> and he goes no and I'm like I'm so sorry <laughs> like I just assumed it's oh okay okay <clears throat> and so, so you know we're playing we did the initial mission and it's also that thing of like it, it Hell Divers obviously starts very easy very brain dead you know yeah. run to this thing get the thing do the thing and it's like you're you're not even shooting that much mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so we did two of the missions and i was like you can stop playing if you want we can go back to fortnite we can get back to him and he's like no no i'm in i'm like okay okay so it was like he had the hooks in him and i think if we get out there tomorrow and it is the squad it's yeah. you me kevin and him running through being clowns kevin screaming us going up against the big monsters <laughs> dying dropping things on i think he'll get it in yeah. a way that'll stick with him so i'm, I'm hopeful we can bring democracy to the younger generations this way. I think it's just such an approachable game because the mechanics like aren't particularly hard. It's like you figure out what toys you want to bring with you and then you just shoot everything. It's like not overly complicated to teach somebody. Yeah. It's not like what we'll have to do to get you back into destiny someday <laughs> or like, Oh, this is the meta. Even then, like, do. am I going to be like for destiny? I don't feel like I'm going to be chasing anything with you. It's going to be like, That's let's true. drop in and I got a Slimer ghost and this is going to do the thing and I'm having fun <laughs> but if with we it. drop in for the new campaign for, uh, and light and no, no, I'm just making it up. Something with light. I want to say beyond light. But I thought something like way end. old one. The final shape. There we go. Final I don't know why did I think it had light in it. 
I mean, I think every time, like half the Destiny <laughs> expansions have the word light in it. Yeah, that's true. People love light. Beyond light, lightful. But then oh. you have to figure out like the boss mechanics and the, you know, all of all the phases of damage and all that stuff. You don't really have to do that with this. People love Helldivers as well. I asked why everybody else couldn't stop playing Helldivers. Neo wrote in and touched on something you said, right? The game is impeccably designed around fun and friends slash others. The ease of playing with a newbie is just as welcoming as playing with elites. Entry is easy and the skill ceiling is high. What an absolute joy of a time. And again, that's back to it of like, last night, sure, I wish I was, I'd gone up three levels or whatever, but just playing with Jack was fun and yeah. running and shooting the bugs is fun. And it, especially for me of like having taken a couple weeks off because of reviews and things to get, cause I can't, I can't spin plates. I gotta be oh, focused on what I'm playing, yeah. right? To get back in yesterday, it was like, get my wheels going again. What am I doing again? Okay. What am I grinding for right now? You know? Uh, and again, that's outside of. Even, this is such an interesting one, and so many people wrote in saying this feel, truly feels like a live service, right? Because, like, the way it continues to pull even when you're not there. Like, I haven't turned, I haven't jumped into Helldivers like in two weeks, we'll say, right? And I still feel that I'm part of the community because I'm still participating online. I, you know, I, I last thing I really did was when I was trying to help get the mechs unlocked and all these mm-hmm. things. But like, you're seeing the things and the ministry of truth and the denial of flying bugs. And like, they've done such a great job of making the world all around it, right? Uh, Mr. Minstry wrote in and said, in the Raising Kratos documentary, Corey Barlog says the key to a great game is the question, why am I doing this? I think, the, I think this is the first live service game that answers that question properly. It keeps you in the fight, not for the gear, but for the mission and the immersion gameplay, right? That you're going through and doing this thing. So many people wrote in about how much fun it was, changing up your loadouts, being a part of that. Like, it's still something I can't believe they nailed, right? I can't believe after nine years they came out and nailed this game the way they did. It's still crazy to me, the reception, because I feel like at the beginning of the year it was like, Helldivers, oh, that's the game that Greg's excited about and <laughs> nobody else is talking about. Oh, yeah. And now to go in and see how many people are still playing My so TikTok feed still just giant, uh, so outrageous funny. events happening. Yeah, um, and the way that, is it Joel, the game maker, who's yeah. like yeah, playing yeah, yeah. things and stuff like that? I love that he just like drops into random people's games and is like, here's mech, here's this car thing. Hey, why are you doing this automaton mission and there are dead bugs over here? Like, what are all of these like fun mysteries? It feels like kind of how we felt like at this point years ago with Fortnite, where it's like, what's this story going to be? Anything but then happen. they never did anything with it or yeah, nothing yeah. of consequence. It felt like we're talking about the rock, the foundation. Never yeah. Forget. I'm like, it's been years since he's been in it. And I don't think it really matters. I think yeah. they've probably figured out that that's not the direction for this, but yeah, all of the world bu- building committing to democracy, like just the ridiculousness of this game. And I, I think this is the first game in a long time where I've laughed so much playing with people. I think the fact that it's not PvP obviously Mm -hmm, helps mm -hmm, because I feel like that the competitiveness gets people caught up really fast. But no, we're just we're just killing bugs. We're killing robots. Nate Farr says last night one of my friends joined the mission. Immediately declared he was going to land and kill another friend, and was able to aim perfectly and hit him. (laughs) We couldn't stop laughing. Mm -hmm. Something hysterical every time we play. Uh, uh, Nova 007 says the loop is too good Uh, I just wanted a solid multiplayer PVE game Mm -hmm. I got close with Dark Tide on my PC and I did put 40 hours into it but it just couldn't hold me much longer they just have something with this I think the major orders slash metagame is what really keeps me wanting to play always having something to do to work together again having taken the time off when I turned it back on I got like 250 medals Ooh. from like the things I had started and helped out with and then not come back just to see that all there. Yeah. <clears throat> it really feels rewarding to do it as little as you can or jump in and help somebody and do the thing and really move it that way. Um, I think we might have broken Kevin on stream last week when we played. He's been broken so many times <laughs> though. But it was one of those things where Kevin put down a turret then or no Nick put down a turret. Kevin called down another turret on top of Nick's turret which had already been there. Which then, of course, got Nick mad. So then Nick killed Kevin. And then Kevin was mad about that. And then Roger killed Nick. And then Nick <laughs> left without any of us and none of the samples. And it was just like, there's no other game that we can do this in where, like, people aren't taking it too seriously. Yeah, yeah. You're, ha- <laughs> you're, you're, you're cranky about it, but it's also part of the fun of the game. Exactly. It's not like Call of Duty where, like, the progression is really halt. Or I don't even know if that's Call of Duty, but, like... It's not really halting your progression that much. Are the 20 samples that we missed really, do they matter? Yeah. Blessing, what's it going to take to get you to stop playing Tekken, to stop playing Stellar Blade demos, and come over here and play some Helldivers? Have I mean, you played it at all? I played once on a stream. I enjoyed it. Like, mm-hmm. that's the thing is, I, in 
the perfect world, I think I would be playing Helldivers. But yeah, like we're, we live in a world where Tekken exists. <laughs> and I mean, also like other games exist. This right? is the traditional problem of the job. Where, yeah, in a perfect world, I would have never stopped playing Helldivers. I would mm. be level 50. I would have everything unlocked. I would be blah, blah. And it's like, I see Gary putting up screenshots, and he's like level 48. And I'm like, God, oh, yeah. I'm jealous, Gary. You know what yeah. I mean? But I moved on to X, Y, and Z. But to be able to come back and still feel welcomed into it and not feel like Destiny, where like I come back, and I'm like, I don't know what the hell. Where the hell? What am I doing now? Yeah, and yeah. like, we'll see what happens, obviously, like a decade from now with Helldivers too. But. And I also think right <laughs> now in the downtime of, um, I, like, I say downtime, like, there's nothing coming out right now, but for, for me, Video games a, are dead. for me, there's a little bit of downtime of I'm not playing uh, much Rise of the Ronin. I'm not playing as much Dragon's Dogma 2. I want to get back to it at some point because I know he's wrong, right? Andy yeah, sucks. Yeah, fuck oh, Andy, no, yeah. no but like I do want to get back to Dragon's Dogma 2 at some point, but I'm just, I'm just not in the mood for Dragon's Dogma 2, yeah. which is what I had to decide. Sure. Um, I think I am reverting back to, all right, what are like, what are the things that I love? And so like, I think for a third person shooter, I like a third person shooter, but I love a fighting game and I love a roguelike. So right now I pick back up Hades and I'm playing oh. a lot of Hades. Yeah. 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 And so like I started doing that. Um, I took a couple days off this week because I had a big um, trip with both GDC and then PAX East. Uh, and so as I got back, took a couple days off and that first day off, I was, I booted up Dragon's Dogma 2 just to like, you know, I got it. All right. Everybody loves it. Yeah, everybody gotta loves get it. in there. Let gotta get find out why they love it. And then, like, I I um started the game five seconds in. I get reminded of where I'm at, and I'm like, oh, I'm not in the mood. <laughs> I, oh, I, I like good. I hit a point where I got stuck trying to figure out what I'm supposed to do in this quest. <laughs> and so I boot it up, and I'm like, I don't want to be here. And so I boot it down, and I'm like, okay, well, what do I want to do? Because I feel like playing a game, especially because I just come off playing the Celebrate yeah. demo, and um I've been listening to uh s- some of the coverage of Judas. Uh, yeah. the Levine game and uh, France per second was talking about it and they're interviewing Ken and being like and like asking what about what it is and all this stuff and they're breaking it down of how it has like a roguelike structure with like characters that are recurring and you side with characters and all this stuff and I'm like this reminds me a lot of Hades oh you know what I never beat Hades back in the day wow let me pick Hades back up yeah like I, I you know I didn't pick it up on, on PlayStation because I had the game on Steam and that's where my saves at and I picked it up and I'm like okay I'm 20 hours in uh are i you remember playing deck or i am playing on the deck yeah um so i yeah I, like i saw 20 hours in i remembered that i got up into the third boss fight uh with like the two uh people that you're fighting at the same time <laughs> and i was like oh cool let me, let me just play a few runs you know have fun with it and immediately i got sucked all the way back in to where i am addicted now <laughs> you know, yeah. i spent like a Hell good yeah. portion of yesterday just playing through got past that boss fight got to the final boss fight um and like i know for haiti you set to beat it a certain amount of times to actually beat the game and so we'll see if i get there on this on this playthrough but i'm having such a blast with it uh, like it's such a reminder of how good these guys are at making games like yep. the fact that the game has a great soundtrack the game has great art style the game has great writing great characters and when you talk about the gameplay and how how well fleshed out their systems are and how i think the pacing at which they reveal new things to, for, uh, to you. Like, I thought I had found all, like, the different options for boons in the game, which are your power-ups, right? But then, like, what, t- 30 hours in, I come across a new one that they introduce, and I'm like, oh, snap. Goddamn. Like, <laughs> I didn't even know that I could I could have, like, a chill status effect on people, and so now I'm picking that one back up, um, and I'm having such a blast, right? Like, I'm having such a good time playing Hades, and so um, it, for me, is, like, kind of my comfort game right now. You know, I think I, I did a stream a couple weeks ago where i like did um my ranking of video game genres like just like um mm. what you call like a tier list yeah. of video game genres and my s tier i put roguelike in there nice. and i think that's just become me in the last two years of between returnal and um uh, games like rogue legacy and dead cells and stuff right but then like yeah hades included in there i'm like dude these games are so fun and i can't and Bellatro, don't forget Bellatro. oh yeah and Bellatro. Mm. that's the other thing yeah Bellatro. Did you do rogue legacy too I played a bit of Rogue Legacy 2, but I think it was too, it felt too similar to Rogue gotcha. Legacy 1, where yeah. it just didn't, you know, stick as much. But I'm sure one day I'll get back to that too. Um, but I think that's, but that's the thing is that, you know, between all these games that we're listing, I am always kind of in the mood, you know, like once I get back into the flow of it, I think because of the, because of the fact that they're run based and because like that gameplay loop is so addicting to me that I'm like, oh yeah, let's go. Another one, another one, another one. And yeah, it just works so well. And so it's been so fun going back to Hades. Well, I think what's fun, of course, is supporting us with the kind of, I was hoping Barrett would run faster. I'm kidding around. I'm not doing it, Barrett. I just wanted to see if I can make him run out of the room. Uh, no, I felt the same way, with, you know, again, with uh, Rise of the Ronin, mm-hmm. where it hit so hard for me, where I was like, I didn't realize, I, open world action adventure kind of is my shit, and I wasn't thinking about it when I started it, and I was like, so 
back into it in Rapture with another thing that's kept me away from Helldivers too. But now that that has become just the that's my portal game. Jen is watching TV. I'm doing that. And I don't feel I can do that with Helldivers. Like Helldivers, I feel like I need to be listening intently. Even if yeah. I'm not talking, I need to be able to hear what's going on to be part of it. Did I ever mention to you that I'm back in the portal posse? You did. Yeah, I forget why, though. Was it, oh, I think I texted you or something. Yeah. But yeah, like, I'm always, you're always welcome back. Yeah, no, it feels good <laughs> to be back. It's because um, I, like, my big complaint was just that my Wi-Fi at home wasn't the best. And so my experience with the portal wasn't always that great. Yeah. Uh, Kevin, when he heard that, had given me his Google Wi-Fi, and I oh, set it up in my thing. room. Yeah, like the little pod thing. So I set it up in my room, and it the Wi-Fi from that thing, like now I have excellent Wi-Fi, essentially. Yeah. And so I got the portal. I was just like in one of my drawers in my, at my desk at work, brought it home, started playing. Uh, that's how I've been playing a lot of Dragon's Dogma 2, actually. Oh, nice. I was playing that. Yeah, yeah. Just playing it in bed. Fantastic. I love my PlayStation Portal now. Like, I loved it <laughs> before, Andy. but I would only use it at work. And so I'm like, okay, well, I can just play my PlayStation 5 at work. But yeah, yeah having it at home and like having the having it actually work as intended and not even needing to like leave my bed to play to play shit. It's gorgeous. It's great. I love it. Yeah, I know. It's it's I'm not saying saved my marriage, but it gave my marriage <laughs> at least a few more years because of the fact that now oh, yeah. like I can just lay in bed and play PlayStation rather than mm-hmm. have to go downstairs, come up. Slam into everything when I get in the room. Jen get all mad at me. Uh, before we switch, because there's a bunch of other games I do want to talk about. Rich8606 had this thing. I'm calling it. Helldivers 2 will win best ongoing game at TGA 2024. How's that oh. feel? Game awards, you think, uh, best ongoing? I mean, is it a game that you're nominated? You know? Does it get nominated for the big thing? I think. I mean, obviously right now our dance card is light because so few games have come out. I think it will. Barrett's shaking his head no. I, I think... I think there's a lot of love for it in the audience that it's found. I, I but the audience know, is like, so large. The audience is so much larger than I would have, I would have ever suspected as a fan. But how much of that audience is in the realm of people who are nominating for Game Awards? I mean, I think a lot. I think a lot of the yeah. game, game industry. I've seen. I mean, again, you got people like Gary. I saw Jacinda on there today. Is Gary know. not nominating for the Game Awards? No, but I th- I count him in our group. Okay. Gary's no, playing okay. with other hardcore people, and I don't want to name names, but I've seen him. I'm like, oh, I know that name. Or yeah. yeah. I think it's going to come down to what the rest of the year looks That's like. That's the for problem, it because always, right? it's an ongoing That's thing. Because what? It's going to be Dogma, Final Fantasy Seven Rebirth. Rebirth, yeah. I and mean, then, then there's like question marks of like this Wukong. This w- 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 long this year. Fallen, the Fallen, no, fa- Wukong Fallen Dying Sales last year. What's the one yeah. that's coming up? Rise uh, of the Black, Myth- Black Myth Wukong. Wukong. Yes, yes, Black Myth Wukong. That's what I'm thinking of. I think that might be a sleeper. Bellatro? No, not. I mean, not over Helldivers too. It better be in Best Indie, though. It'll be in my top Whatever 10, probably. Means. Whatever that means. Well, Dave the Diver 2 will be there. Indie? <laughs> I feel like Indie, <laughs> it, like... Uh, oh, like, Indiana Jones. Because it's such a, like, um, uh, not to be derivative, but uh, Sony-coded in, like, sure. big action-adventure uh, cinematic type of game. Remember Metaphor when you said that about Fantasio. Starfield, though? No? Oh, the last thing you said, Barrett? Metaphor Refantasio. No. I mean, I would love that, but, like, I don't think so. We'll see. Each, right? we'll see. We'll see. I think... Uh, it breaks I, out. I, I think in terms of like the wide, um, like a game speaking to a wide audience, right? Like I think Held Out Risk 2 is hitting that in a way that is... That doesn't dictate what gets nominated for Game of the Year, though. Oh, for sure, right? But I think, I mean, I do think it's a numbers game there, though, right? Mm -hmm. Like I think it's numbers plus quality. I think Metaphor Refantazo is going to be quality, but I think it coming out toward... I don't actually, do we know when it's coming out? I assume end of the year. We just had a blanket year this year. Yeah. uh, I assume sometime in... um, fall but so i think oh man greg has the same idea of looking up the fantasy yeah I'm, looking, I'm just seeing what pops off of like oh of course that but it's like that i don't i mean but i could see hellblade. metaphor being a, a oh hellblade yeah that's a good one i can see metaphor being a slow burn of like people that pick it up it almost being a sea of stars situation or octopath traveler 2 situation of, of the people that playing it that play it be like oh yeah. this is fucking a banger and then like it takes a while for people to catch on until like the next year when everybody hears it on top 10 list and they're like oh, yeah I they're like, like, oh that man i should have played metaphor re fantasia <laughs> i think it's got a shot on, uh says uh, star wars outlaws no one holds your breath in that one we'll see yeah. uh, but actually, that's just the thing of like you know giant triple a ip games are hard to now that we've talked it out i think held Two was in yeah i right that feels like it but yeah. i mean who knows what how those games will shake out but i would hope that and then i would think if they keep up with everything they've done, which they've showed us no reason they wouldn't with war bonds, but then just, hey, there's a fire and tornado all of a sudden. Hey, yeah. there's yeah. we're teasing <laughs> mechs, and hey, they're doing this thing in the game. Dra- I, I think, yeah, this is best ongoing, right? Because, again, that's what so many people wrote in about was the fact that, like... Over Skull and Bones? <laughs> <laughs> over Suicide Squad <laughs> over Season Suicide 1? Squad? <laughs> over Foam Stars? Oh, man, you know, it's a rough year out there. Uh, blessing. Are, are those games all out now? Yeah. 
Yeah. They're all out. All of them are out. You wouldn't know. <laughs> yeah. Today, the Joker DLC season one dropped for Suicide Squad. Good for Paul them. Tassi's like, I don't understand what's happening. His Twitter's very <laughs> funny. He's like, I don't even know how to get to it. Why is everything 80? What's going on? Uh, I want to hear about Stellar Blade uh, Blessing. But first, mm. of course, I want to remind you, ladies and gentlemen, that if you love PS I Love You XOXO, your weekly PlayStation conversation, you should use that kind of funny membership. With the kind of funny membership, you get each and every episode of this show and all our shows ad free. You can watch us record this show and all the afternoon podcasts live as you record them. And of course, you can get the multimedia experience Greg Way each and every day. But you're not using your membership benefits right now. So here's a word from our sponsor. This episode is brought to you by Shady Rays, an independent sunglasses brand that has over 300,000 five-star reviews. They are on a mission to match affordability with durability, making top quality shades accessible to everyone. They have tons of styles and colors to pick from, so finding the perfect polarized shades is a breeze. If you want an upgrade, we recommend their premium Color Rush lenses. Crafted with rare earth materials, these lenses bring high impact color to life, elevating reds, blues, and greens. Here at Kind of Funny, we all love wearing our Shady Rays, whether it's me looking dope doing my Pokemon Go walks, Snowbike Mike rocking the snow goggles, or Joey just looking fantastic in her tangle-free shades. If your shades go MIA or take a hit, don't sweat it. They've got lost and broken protection, so you're covered from day one. And if you don't love your shades, exchange or return them for free within 30 days. Exclusively for y'all, Shady Rays is giving out their best deal of the season. Head to ShadyRays.com and use code KF20 for $20 off each pair of polarized sunglasses. Try for yourself the shades rated five stars by over 300,000 people. Again, that's ShadyRays.com and use code KF20 for $20 off each pair of polarized sunglasses. Blessing. Greg. Andy, totally wrong about Dragon's Dogma on the game's cast. Of course. <laughs> but he had a lot to say about Stellar Blade. And I feel like you wrote in uh, with your comments were just this is, uh, your comment was, this is extremely my shit. Yep. Tell me about uh, your experience with Stellar Blade. Yeah, I, I just I haven't gotten to li listen to Andy talk about it, so I'm so curious on, to know what he thought. But like I, so my journey with this game going going back to announcement has been interesting because like when they first showed off Stellar Blade, I think back then it was Project Eve, and makes sense. I remember seeing it and being like, this game looks really cool. Um, it reminds me of Nier, <laughs> and I, I was like, kind of like my big takeaway is like, oh man, some people are very inspired by the Nier games, and I love like Nier Automata is probably in my, in my one of my favorite games ever. Yeah, and so I saw that, and I was like, okay, cool, like it looks like a platinum game, like oh, this looks really rad. And then over time, right, like they announced the actual name Stellar Blade, they put out a couple of trailer, a couple more trailers. The trailers range from being like, oh, this looks cool, to then I think the last day to play one not being great, right? Sure. Just from yeah, like it was awkward, just I awkward. Yeah, I think yeah. the mixing and like them how like the the, the the music and then also like what they choose to sh chose to show just didn't present the game as hype as I think the game has been up until now. Um, getting to actually get my hands on the demo for this game again. Thank you, PlayStation, for um, sending us the game. I am back around to being hyped. You know, I think that last showing had me like, ooh, okay, maybe this might be rough. Like, I don't think these guys understand what makes near near. Yeah. Because you know, like for me, I love near for like the story, the tone, the vibe, like all this, other, all, uh, all, all this stuff. And I, a lot of what we've seen out of the marketing for Stellar Blade has almost been like a, oh yeah, we got cool designs, but then also here's the. Uh, like here's the jiggly physics on the booty. <laughs> it's yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like okay, well, I, like I, I don't want this to be one of those games that I'm playing and I have to like hide it <laughs> from people, right? Like I want to be I want to be like loud about this game, right? Like I want to be able to play it and like you know you know not have that like thing hanging over it. Uh, getting my hands on this game, that stuff isn't as prominent as I would have thought. You yeah, know? like I'm not. I never noticed one scene where I was like, oh man, this feels overly fan servicey. I'm sure that stuff is gonna be in there, uh, but. From what I played, I was like, "Oh no, okay, no, like that. That stuff doesn't seem as front and centered as I would have assumed based on internet and some of the marketing." Um, what I was presented with was a game that I think takes a lot of influence from Near, but then also takes influence from other things that I really dig, like uh, Devil May Cry, and also mm. a little bit of Souls in there too, okay. like a little bit of Sekiro in there. And I love all these things. And playing this game, it feels like they understand that stuff. It feels like they understand like all the influences that they needed to take to make this a good action game but then you know mix them together in a pot 
with like a pretty good chef. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like it feels so a pretty good chef. A pretty good chef. Yeah. Like <laughs> it feels so like well realized just in like, you know, I'm running around the environments that I am listening to the music and the music is fucking like it's great. Music's right? good. It's like it's chill, it's like, you know, vocal melodies. It is, you know, kind of serene and it is giving me giving me back to that like that near vibe of it. But then the combat is not doesn't strike me as near at all like the combat reminds me a bit of like a mix between devil may cry and then also um almost like a souls kind of thing where it's a bit more defensive it's a bit more difficult than i thought it was going to be going in i thought i was just gonna be hacking and slashing and all that stuff but getting into it it is oh i gotta time my parry is like mm -hmm. i gotta be careful i have my healing items that i'm popping like i'm playing a souls game right like i am uh being a bit more thoughtful in the way that i'm going about combat even though <coughs> like i think overall the combat is a bit more platinum in style right like it is big actions it is fast it is swift um and i think it's really enjoyable you know like you have your abilities that you're using you're pressing um a, like i think it's l1 and then you're pressing one of the face buttons to activate one of your uh beta abilities which are like these big moves you know it reminds me a little bit of like playing spider-man 2 where it is like you have your weapon or your uh wheel of like four different moves that you hit a button and then you know spider-man busts out his claws or whatever similar sort of situation here uh and like you know if you're watching the video version right now like she just did like a move where it is like a bunch of stabs and like a final stab right like that's the kind of stuff that she's doing when you press that and it feels great like the whole time i've been in it and i like how um uh like I kind of like the flow of, okay, I like use that. So I had to wait for that to recharge, but you know, depending on how I play, I can recharge it quicker and then get for, go for another hit. Um, for me, the combat really came together when I beat the demo, which opens up like boss a, rush. um, oh, what was that? Boss rush. Yeah. The boss mode, right. Where they unlock more of the abilities and kind of like let you get almost like a mid game feel of how this is going to play. And I found myself fighting that boss multiple times just to like, Kind of get more of a feel for it and just you have fun. his ass now. Oh, yeah. No, I was killing that boss. Stupid ass open up claw, fade body, and then close <laughs> yeah. it up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah so, yeah. like, once I get my hand on more of the moveset, I was like, oh, this this is going to sing. Like, that was I, the thing for me of, like, you know, going through and not being the action game guy, playing through this demo, beating it. Like, there was, I, I, I'm still not the action guy. It's still not at the top of my list of something to play, and that's fine. Not every game needs to be for me. But what I did get impressed with was going through the skill tree, and I forget what they, I think they call it blink, where if you do the it's a perfect dodge, you can then warp behind the guy yeah. and slice him up from behind. Like when I got that, that was like the oh, interesting. I wonder if I played and I was sitting there with from you know level one building up choosing out my skills if i would really find something that flowed for what i wanted to be what i wanted to be uh, what i really did like about it was cinematography yep. the opening's great i think they have a lot of great cam work in there so it's, it's you know this giant juggernaut scale of fighting in space to come down there the explosions you set off with your partner the first monster you guys fight you have this like awesome move where you both like slash him at the same time and then like freezes frames so i was like very anime i was like that's cool that's cool yeah yeah like i think the style of the game is so cool yeah like when you look at the enemy designs especially the boss designs i'm like this th like this has like a rad style behind it the one thing that i'm still kind of waiting for is for a story to capture uh, capture mm -hmm. me mm -hmm. you know there's nothing in the demo story wise or narrative wise where but I'm again like, that's why it's so hard you get tossed yeah. into these things and it's like is this where what you about like i feel like easing into it would have done so much for me to be like oh wow i like this more you know what i mean like yeah it's in general i'm not an action game guy so it's like whatever i'm not i've never been the bayonetta i've never been the dmc guy but th what they were doing with and playing with seemed cool and if there was more of that story in it i could see me not struggling on with it but giving it a, a, a real shot yeah and i like oh, I, I i could see it going places like i could see that story building and the characters building like they start you off in a place where it is all right, these people are already established. Like, I believe it's the beginning of the game, right? But like, and I, I have to assume so because I believe the save data for the demo when it comes out, it carries over. Yeah, carry yeah. over. And so it's the beginning of the game, but you're kind of already, like these characters are kind of already doing their thing. They're already a bit established. And so they're kind of throwing you into what's happening in the story. But there's not anything there that had me like, oh, snap. Like, I can't wait to see what happens next with Eve. Or like, I wonder, I wonder what this relationship is. All this stuff. It has like a lot of questions but i'm not feeding for the answers yet exactly yeah, uh, yeah yeah and i could see it building towards that but that's the only thing so far where i'm like all right cool i'm more here for the action i'm more here for the gameplay i'm more here for just like the style and the world and the soundtrack and stuff i was gonna attack this on the end but i want to toss it here because it's super short in a similar vein of like playing a demo and being like oh is this the game i did the sandland demo today oh. i jumped in there and i had gotten the sandland demo at sgf uh, last year uh totally caught off guard it was one of those where i booked like the multi things and they walked me there and i said and i'm like ooh. This doesn't look like it's going to be my jam. 
I was like, wait a second, this is fucking totally my jam. I was like, <laughs> I, the manga, and I don't know any of that background, but open world, RPG, you know what I mean? Like, okay, cool, like, I like that a lot. But when this demo dropped, I think it was Andy I was talking to, who was like, oh, man, that demo wasn't good. I was like, really? Oh, fuck, blah, blah, blah. And I was so concerned it was the SGF demo I got. Mm. And instead, I started this thing up, and it just drops you in the desert, and is like, a bunch of guys to fight, and, like, you can use the thing. And I was like, you are missing all of the charm that I found at SGF. And I was like, that is ridiculous to drop it in here and have it be this. And like, I, maybe it gets better, but I, they dropped me and I was like, couldn't go this one way. Wouldn't let me go. Did the other. I'm like, this sucks. I stopped playing it. I was like, no, no, no. I'll wait for the thing. But yeah, I, I, I hope it's not in a, like a <clears throat> clue of what the overall game is because it, it just sounds like it was just a really bad demo i mean it's just it, it like literally they're just like oh you got this capsule and you got three vehicles you can throw out to go dr-. it's like okay but like is there a mission is there an objective am i supposed to be doing anything or is this yeah. just to see what the combat is and that the game's pretty like i don't know but when i played at sgf i liked a lot so i'm still holding out hope that the final game drops but hmm. i digress uh unique technique says and i think he's talking about stellar blade is this demo f- out for the general population yet it comes out friday the same day this post publicly so you can get stellar blade on friday and the sandland demo yes is available public right now but what also is available, ladies and gentlemen, is Open Roads. Oh. Of course, this is from the Open Roads team, which you probably like, I don't know what that means. These <laughs> used to be Fulbright people before uh, Fulbright exploded, and yeah. they spent a spun off to finish this game. So think like Gone Home. Mm-hmm. Of course, that means it's going to be emotional. It's going to be a walking sim, and me and Joey are going to be <laughs> uh, begging for codes. Joey, what did you think of Open Roads? I had fun. I'm a little bit confused on like... Ooh. How this exists in the sense that like I have been a a cheerleader for we need shorter games. Yeah. I don't need I don't need 30 hour games. I want shorter games. This might have like overcorrected a little bit too far because this is like two hours. And I felt like I I guess it's like the best case scenario where it's like I want more from this. Um, but it felt like almost like a demo where it's like, is there more to this? I feel like there should be more to this, but I I got I rolled credits and that was the end of it. Um, so I hope that we get more from this. Interesting. Um, it just, it, it felt like, I don't know why I have, I, maybe I just wasn't paying attention cause I knew from the beginning that I was going to play this. I'm like, Oh, we have Carrie Russell and we have the girl whose name I always forget. You have Caitlin Dever. Caitlin Dever, who's oh, in so many things. I didn't realize so Caitlin Dever was in there. In yeah, the old days, the you daughter. probably knew her as book smart. Now you will know her as Abby in the last of a season. Exactly. Two. Carrie uh, Russell, was, of course, Felicity. I should not have to explain this to you. The Americans. Felicity. Okay. Okay. <laughs> she cut her hair. It was a big deal. I get it. Um, I think the art style in this is really cool. I think the voice acting is cool. The mystery of the story I thought was interesting. I like that it's set in like the 90s. There's like a couple music cues. I'm like, oh, I kind of forget that it's set in the 90s. And then it's like you see or er, 90s, 2000s. Uh, I think it was 90s, right? 90s, yeah. 90s. And then you see like their phones and you hear like a music cue and you're you like, start oh, that's right. <laughs> no, there is There is a radio. Yeah. Oh. And you turn it in and it was like, I'm like, oh, this will just be like sound alike. So I'm like, oh, this is no, actually a song. Like candy music. shop at 50 cents. Yeah. Oh, I wish I was that excited. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I just wanted more. I wanted more. I still want more. And I think that the mystery just got wrapped up a little bit too quickly for me. So as we said, uh, a gone home like uh, Joey did a great thing. The official (laughs) Steam description reads like this. Long lost family secrets, hints of a hidden fortune, and miles to go before they sleep. Tess Devine, Caitlin Dever, uh, her her relationship with her mom, Carrie Russell, has never been easy. uh, But they're about to set out together on a journey into the past that they'll never forget. A good synopsis, a fine synopsis. Yeah. Uh, yeah, another walking sim, and if you're coming off of Gone Home, it's uh, a plus up from that, right? Because it is still finding notes, read the notes, yada, yada, yada. But both, obviously, the mom and daughter are voice cast and have all their lines of dialogue, and you get to choose, you know, hey, mom, look at this, and have a conversation there. You pick your responses, which then choose what, what interesting story thread or mystery you're focusing on. And then, again, the art style they showed there, I wasn't... I hadn't been obviously blackout on it. We had seen and reacted, but I had seen enough to yeah. know that I'm going to want to play this. I wasn't expecting number one, how it would actually present it, and then number two, to like it once I saw it presented. But the fact that the conversations as they happen, you know, the characters pop up in that same art style you saw in the trailer there, right? And then they move and react and do this, but their lips don't move. It's just the voiceover. And I was when that started, I was like, this seems weird. And then I found myself immediately, you know, forgetting about it and actually putting the controller down 
like not skipping. You can skip dialogue, obviously, yeah. after you've read it. But I actually liked both of their performances so much, and I let it play at, like a movie. And I'm like, this is so bizarre to me watching a movie where the lips aren't moving, but this isn't happening. But it works for the style of what they're doing. It felt kind of like uh, As Dusk Falls because I feel that's like what that, I thought too, right? Yeah. But it's just yeah, a different art style, but very much that same kind of mechanic. See, and that's an interesting comparison. Of course, As Dusk Falls, formerly Xbox exclusive, now on PlayStation. We love that game as well. I thought As Dusk Falls overstayed its welcome. And so, like, open roads I've left, and I feel like I am way, not way, I shouldn't say I was high on dust, As Dusk Falls. I'm mm -hmm. higher on open roads because I feel like I had a A to B, you know, A to Z, whatever you want to call it, journey, yeah. and that it was good, that was fulfilling. I did it in two sittings. I you know, the story, the mystery, the thing, the twist, the turns. Like, in the very beginning, I was like, okay, like, you know, gone home, had the thing hanging over your head, or you thought you were in a haunted house, and then, okay, blah, blah, Like, this one is just a mom and a daughter going through grandma's house. That's weird. And then it was like, as it set off on the road trip, it was like, oh, you know what? I'm into this. I'm into the mystery. Yeah. And then I liked the reveal and the ending for it. Yeah, I like the reveal. I think that we could have, if we wanted to flesh out the game, I think exploring a little bit more of like the dad side of things could have been interesting. I wanted to know more about the mom and the aunt. Yeah. And I think that we could have had some, I, that's another like fun casting opportunity where I feel like it could have been someone fun. And I wonder too, for those conversations though, how much if you go back and pick the other sides of conversations, right? Cause I focus yeah. very much on mom's relationship with dad. And I yeah. was very connected to that of like, well, what's going on here? You know what I mean? So I felt, I don't know if I got more than you did out of that, but Maybe, we'll have to talk about yeah. that in a spoiler. You I kind of just, I just went with whatever I felt like. <laughs> I sure. had no rhyme yeah. or reason for which path and stuff I went down, but I also didn't feel like I was particularly, well, I guess that's no, I won't ask that question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wasn't particularly motivated enough, or I guess invested enough in those side storylines to feel like I wanted to go back and replay the game to get those answers. See, I feel like, and that's what's interesting for me is I feel like my playthrough, I don't have outstanding questions. Mm, I like, have I feel one, like, but I feel like it's kind of spoilery. Oh, slack, slack it to me and I'll, I'll look at it. But it was the idea of like, I thought they answered them to the level they needed. I got the information. And I always tell the story of like for Gone Home, right? When I finished Gone Home the first time, I immediately went and hugged my ex-girlfriend. Well, she was my girlfriend at the time, right? And I was like, but I was like touched about it. When I beat... Uh, open roads in my desk I immediately slacked Jen and I was just like let's never break up and she's just like what the hell are you talking about what's going on I'm like oh, she's like, what's? I'm like I finished a video game that dealt with moms and dads and kids and stuff and I was like oh man I felt it yeah um, ah no I didn't and I did want to yeah that's yeah, the yeah, only yeah, 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 like yeah. outstanding thing that I have left there also it should be an easy platinum oh I, really yeah like I have oh, four I trophies Steam. left or whatever and there's a chapter select and in my old days I would have gone home and done it in the middle of the night, but I've played other games instead where I'll just wait. I'll wait for the guide <laughs> to see the refrigerator one. Is it what I think it is? I don't want to go do that and find out I'm wrong. Yeah. Um, I guess it's, I think in terms of like comparing it to as dusk falls, I agree that the, I think that the, it was a little bit longer than I would have wanted, but I was, I felt more invested in the side stories, obviously, because we have more time with all those characters. Sure. Uh, that I, was motivated enough to keep playing because I wanted to know how it, how those played out. Um, and I obviously didn't necessarily feel that about this. I just, I feel like it was just sh a shorter story and a smaller story. I appreciate that. I understand that. Yeah. I hope, I kind of hope we get, I don't know if we'll get more. I don't know. I don't think you will. This is just a one and done thing. It. I think they, they answered okay. their little questions. They had their little emotional journey. Yeah. It's just like really surprising to me to have like a full game be like two hours. Yeah. In terms of like a narrative story versus, I don't know, something, if it's like good pizza, great pizza, where it's like, oh, you're just making pizzas. That's one thing. It takes like a couple <laughs> hours. I don't know. Tim also slacked me this game where he plays a Pomeranian and you're just trying to get the house really dirty all day. Nice. And <laughs> that's also on my forget, list. Was that, that like Dwanka Donka or something yes, like that? A hundred percent. The name, it, it's something weird like that. Uh, so in the chat, uh, Pooley GT says twenty dollars might be too steep for a two-hour experience for me. And I think that'll yeah. be the, the case for a lot of people, right? Where I think, yeah, I could, I can definitely see that. I totally understand that. On Game uh, Pass, right? It is on Game Pass, yeah. But we are a PlayStation podcast, so we oh, don't we ignore right. that. Never mind, just kidding. all right. We don't Bill talk Spencer about that. can pack it up. Nobody <laughs> wants that. You know what I mean? Uh, but I get that. But then I also double back to I. And being me and liking games so much, found this f more fulfilling than most of the movies I watch. Oh, interesting. I am, uh, where I enjoyed this experience throughout. And I mean, this is just clicking and moving and do, you know, whatever, walking around and going through things. But I always like that little 
detective part. It's Duranko Wonko. That's what it is. I was like trying to Google it. I'm like, I can't find Duranko Wonko. Duranko Wonko. Duranko Wonko. Yeah, uh, I feel like for me, movies are probably a little bit more satisfying. Not that this wasn't satisfying, but I feel like there's just more side characters and stuff to flesh out that this pretty much focused on just the two of them. Which I liked. I like that focus. But I get mm-hmm. you. I feel you. Yeah. What would you give it on the kind of funny scale out of five? Um... I think it's a solid three. Okay. And okay. And okay. I think it's Joey. okay. Yeah. I, it's not bad. It's just, and I, oh, no. I feel like it's hard because I just, it's, it's less than I wanted it to be. And yeah. that's like an expectation thing. And that's on me. It's not on the game. Well, that's always the thing about it. And especially when we play with our scale and give out our stuff, right? Where it's like, for me, well, this is something I've noticed a few times over and rise of the Ronin. I want to eventually double back to when I've beaten it. Cause I've mm-hmm. put in a lot of hours on it, but when I beat it, but for this one, it's like, I'm ha- I had a great time with this game, but to sit here and talk about two hours to sit here and talk about, uh, you know, not necessarily feeling like you got everything out of it. That's where he gets into it. Like, what is it on your own personal scale? Yeah. What would you give it? I think I'd still come down. I, I don't, I would come down at four. I still think it's better than most movies. I, I, I was happy. This is, again, <laughs> Get you, you can go ahead and get your pitchforks and everything else ready. Yeah. I enjoyed this more than Poor Things, and we bought Poor Things. The fuck? <gasps> what the fuck? Hold on. Poor Things no, was not- like maybe my favorite movie Poor of Things last is year. like, yeah, like in my top two movies of last year. And what the other one's other one? Oppenheimer. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I really like yeah. Oppenheimer. I hear you. I and respect TMNT. it. Don't get me wrong. It's just like eventually watching Poor Things, we, we're we parents, so we have to break everything up into multiple nights. Oh, yeah. That's Night probably two, not I started playing this. Rise of the Road on the portal next to it <sighs> while I'm watching it. It was fun. I enjoyed it, but like. I will think about open roads far more than I think about poor things. I think about poor Shocking. things almost daily. I think about it all the time. <laughs> hey guys, I, I understand. About it all right, I understand. I'm an idiot. I get it. I'm sorry. <laughs> all right, Frozen Empire. Go see it right now. Thank you, Barrett, for the laugh. <laughs> uh, the last thing I had on here was Ocho. Oh, of course. This cool. is O T X O. This is a oh. game you might remember if you're a true blue kind of funny fan from last year's D- GDC kind of funny game showcase we did, where we had what I think it was 12 or 14 independent developers come through and show their game. Uh, o- Ocho O T X O came through and was shown off, and it is basically a black and white hotline Miami. If we oh, want to cool. boil it down, right? Uh, today, uh, as we are recording, this dropped on PlayStation uh, 5 and uh, 4 and Nintendo Switch. So it made its console uh, jump, which is huge or whatever for them, of course, as an independent st- uh, game studio. Uh, but jumping back into it, it was like, I think I, I did the demo or watched the demo, I forget. And then I think I was like, I'll get to that eventually. And I never got to it. So to jump back, to jump into it for the first time today and start going, holy fucking shit, what a game. Like, bless, you, you remembered right? it. Did you play a lot of yeah, it? Yeah, you- well, I, I didn't play it when it came. It was the same as you, where yeah. like, we saw it. I remember playing it on the couch with you and the developer. But then like, I had downloaded my PC and just never Giant had the time lizard. to get back to it. But yeah, it was a really fun <laughs> game. So black and white, as we were saying, the blood is red. The ammo count is red. The multiplier is red. Uh, and what it is is a roguelike. You're doing runs of Hotline Miami thing. In the very beginning of the game, you find a mask. You put it on. You wake up on a beach. Uh, this guy walks you through this place. And he's like, you might have a, ch- a way to get out if you keep doing this, but you have to kill the thing in the center kind of stuff. And so I think, you know, Barrett watched me and came over. And he's like, he, he, I turned around. I told him, he's like, oh, I was going to ask you, why are you playing Hotline Miami again or whatever? It is... Uh, very easy to look at it and see that it is very clearly inspired by Hotline Miami. It is that top-down perspective. It is the move around, shoot everybody, kill stuff. But they do a bunch of different things with it that make it different. I still, It can still feel like Hotline Miami, but I found myself playing it incorrectly because I was trying to play it like Hotline Miami, right? Like, there are guns everywhere, right? Whereas Hotline Miami, I always felt like I was l- uh, limited on ammo. I should be throwing stuff. I should be doing more of this. Uh, you can, uh, every in between the rooms you go, your health refills, which is super oh, nice, nice, obviously, making it easier. Uh, obviously, the black and white business. Uh, the bartender you see every so often in the very beginning, he's the guy that in between a set number of rooms at the beginning, you get a drink from that'll augment your run, right? So it is like... You can do this and have more health. You can have. You can do this. You'll be slower, but get more of this. You can draw all the weapons together you by holding this kind of thing, which is neat or whatever. But the big change that I'm still wrapping my head around is the focus. Uh, you see it right there. If you're watching, it's running around, slowing down time, giving you the max pain bullet time kind of deal, right? And so I was, for my first run, really using it as if it was like, oh, this is a special ability I shouldn't use too much, where it really became, oh, for 
max number of uh, kills to upgrade that thing, I really should be using it. I pretty much every encounter because it mm. refreshes so much that you can take out part of the room, do it, get in there, do the thing, blah blah blah. Um, I, one of the things I wasn't expecting because I hadn't watched the trailer and forgot all about it was that giant beast there spinning around <laughs> the snake. Like there was a boss yeah. battle, I got through it, I, I beat that guy and moved on or whatever. Like the game, obviously at a glance, is Hotline Miami, but I think it's doing things to separate itself from it and take the great ideas of Hotline Miami and at its own. So I'm having a great time with it. I'm excited to play more. Oh, yeah. And fucking banger of a soundtrack. Would you believe I picked up Hotline Miami like a month and a half ago and just played it randomly? I would. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of timeless, you know? Yeah, it's a good video game. Yeah, it's a good-ass <laughs> yeah. video game you know for I, sure. Do you know what I picked up also like maybe like a week and a half ago randomly? A musical story. Remember this game? Oh, Stray Gods? No, not Stray Gods. Um, A musical story. It's like a jazz-inspired like rhythm narrative game. Yeah. I told you to play this, I think, at one point. Did you like it? Musical. Oh, um, I do. I remember this art. I did. Yeah, I yeah, only yeah. played, I played maybe like a quarter of it, which is like 15 minutes. Because <laughs> uh, the way I was earning trophies, <laughs> I was like, oh, this is a short game, isn't it? Oh. Um, I, I like the little bit I played. I kind of want to go back to it and finish it real quick. But like, <clears throat> yeah, like it, I think my only thing with it is that it seems super simple. It is like they do like a rhythm pa pattern and then you do that ry rhythm pattern and then like yeah. they kind of go on to the they, next they, thing. They have fun with it, uh, introducing more like elements with like different instruments and stuff, uh, instrument mm. types, I would say. Um, but yeah, it, really fun, really, really cool. Uh, I like it. Like Jimi Hendrix inspired type of story, but just also typical uh, rock band just trying to make their way to a music festival. Um, and also just like uh, interesting commentary on creativity and drug use and stuff my my only gripe with it is I the remember, commentary yeah <laughs> Pro drugs. i don't think so uh um, drugs <laughs> <laughs> my my big gripe with it i remember at the time is how they handled the ending there's so like interesting. an ending but then there's like a real ending uh, and then like how you unlock that real ending i was like God, give I, me the story that you want to tell man i've had it downloaded on my playstation for i think maybe two years and I would always pass by it because it's have games. It was at the top. Well, it was at the top of my library, and after a while, I was like, "I need to delete this or play it." And so I was like, "You know what? Fuck it! Like, let me boot into this and see if it catches me." And those first, the like the fifteen minutes I played, I was like, "Hell yeah!" But then I got tired. <laughs> I went to sleep. It happens That's the best. The of real us. enemy of life. I just got being tired. <laughs> did I tell you that I fell asleep during Dune Two? <laughs> How do you fall asleep? Did you see it in theaters? Yeah, I was very tired. Dune 2 is like the loudest movie I've ever heard, and I've never actually seen it. And I've I just seen us, movies we were next in, door to we, it. When me, Tim, and Nick went to go see Ghostbusters again for in review or whatever, mm -hmm. like this just uh, we were like in previews and it was shaking and reverb, and Tim just leans over and Nick goes, Dune 2. <laughs> <laughs> that happened to us during Kung Fu Panda 4. There was like some really heartfelt moment. And I think it was Tim and Nick looked at each other and we're like, it's the it's it's Taylor scene. Swift it's concert the scene. movie. <laughs> no, it's, it's I don't know. I've never seen Dune. It's the big Wait, scene. Oh, you Dune. haven't seen Dune? No, I. Oh, everything I, I know about saw Dune. Dune, I've learned from TikToks. Uh, there was the guy they ride who, the worm. Yeah, there was uh, Lowell Overruled, who's like this public defender guy who I really like on TikTok. He did one as the snake guy, but in a Trump impression that was very funny. And then there was another guy that did the whole plot of Dune two as oh in. Man, I Feel Like a Woman by Shania Twain. And I found both of those very fun. And that's the entirety of my that Dune knowledge. That was very funny. Uh, thank you for putting that on my timeline. <laughs> no problem. Yeah, I get tired. <laughs> that's my thing But it also seems like such a loud movie to fall asleep I in. I fell asleep during the loud part. Yeah. Like, I, like, I, the movie you starts off really pretty chill. tired. I, Don't I, we all? I think I'm, yeah, yeah I think I it's because I turned 30 this year. And my body mm -hmm. is like, no more. <laughs> no more taking back the night. Yeah. Yeah. You can take back your sleep. You're trying to go to do. soccer and see these long movies. Yeah. Not happening. It was like 8 p.m. that I fell asleep to. It wasn't, it wasn't even like I saw it that late. <laughs> it was this evening. It happens, man. I'll never forget God of War Ragnarok. <laughs> like I'm like browning out playing it. And like I'd wake up and Kratos is just running into a wall because I'm like <laughs> oh falling God. asleep like that. I'm like it sucks out of you, man. I'm tired. You know what I mean? <laughs> I yeah. hope you're not tired, ladies and gentlemen, of us talking about video games, because that's all we do.
at Kind of Funny. Of course, get your Kind of Funny membership over on Patreon, over on YouTube. You can watch us record our shows ad free. You could watch them earlier than anybody else in the afternoon. Uh, you could get the multimedia experience called Greg Way. Of course, this has been P.S. I Love You XOXO, your PlayStation conversation. Each and every week, we come together to talk about all things trophies and PlayStations and et cetera and so on. If you like that, get that membership. But remember, you can always get the show for free. YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games. Podcast services around the globe each and every week until next time it's been our pleasure to serve you